the last time we focused on the judiciary on this segment of the program, we looked at an analysis of the criminal justice system in Nigeria. But now we have an act, an official gazette of Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. Now, besides that, there is a team that is monitoring how it is being implemented, how sustainable are the core issues that have been taken off from what used to be from the, to the contemporary times now. So our focus on this segment is monitoring criminal justice in Nigeria. My guest on site, I have Suleiman Daudu. Suleiman Daudu is the Secretary, Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee. Good to have you on insight. Thank you so much. He's also yeah, a nice. lawyer. Thank you. Also, Chief Magistrate Christopher Oba. Christopher Oba is a chairman, speedy trial subcommittee of the Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee. He's also the chairman, Magistrates Association of Nigeria, FCT chapter. Good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Now, let me take off from this axis. We are not here to bore you on what criminal justice is all about, mm -hmm. but I got to know that in the last program, we got to know that years back, women didn't have a right in law to, 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 to bail suspects, right? Mm, but yeah. now that has been addressed in the act. And uh, also we got to know that some of the uh, cork in the wheel of progress in the judicial system was even those who are supposed to aid the law to succeed. But that's not for that for today. That I believe that has been addressed. But quickly, let me take off with Suleiman now. What gaps is the act set to address? Uh, thank you so much uh, for that question. Um, I, I think the the basic one is the uh, the setting right, right the the mechanism for the whole criminal justice system itself which was recognized to be in this array. For instance, the starting point is we had a duplication of the law, applicable laws in the country. That is, we had a criminal procedure code and the Criminal Procedure Act, both for the North and South, respectively. And for that, there are quite different regime in terms of how uh, the procedural law aspect, which is just procedural aspect of the criminal law, that is how the whole processes will be, criminal justice will be dispensed. We're much in disarray. Uh, they were much more not there at the time because what you have is um, en enabling sort of legislation that enable people to get away, the, both the uh, uh, operators, that is the stakeholders, um, to get away with a lot of the non-compliance with uh, human rights safeguards that has been embedded in the Constitution and obviously in the international also conventions. Um, people are just constantly being sent to prison without even any measure for all the diversionary measures. And that is looking at other uh, mechanisms that could actually divert these people without a prison. For instance, the uh, community service and the rest of it. Anyway, there's a whole range of uh, all that deprivation which the AC Criminal Justice Act has now come up with to address those gaps. Uh, both from the, um, uh, the both from the practical side of things in terms of uh, the stakeholders that okay. are happening, let, and let, then the uh, let me hold you there. I yes. think from the perspective of Ghana now, yes. I'm, I'm beginning to appreciate it. But I'm happy that uh, Obai is the chief magistrate. Yes, he is right on the hot seat, and this comes before him almost every other day. Very much correct. So, in driving home this act yes. every day you come face to face with issues he has raised now yes. how do you think all that could be surmounted are they covered fully with this surmounting it yes um the the fact that the actja as is called is revolutionary in nature is without gain saying now the first thing that the law does is that it puts a committee in place to monitor the implementation of the law itself. And it also sets dates that, okay, if this man is accused of committing a crime, he must be brought before the court within so-so time. But we've had that before now. 
and nobody is monitoring it. So at this time, there is this provision of Section 34 of the Act that says the chief magistrate or in the absence of a chief magistrate, the most senior magistrate. In this magistrate, case, you. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> me, because of the district where I operate, and all the chief magistrates in other districts are obligated by this law to visit the places of detention at least once every month to look at those who have been arrested and kept in custody. And without when, trial. Without trial. You just go there. Anybody you find in the detention, you ask the questions. When were these persons arrested? What were they arrested for? Have they been given access to lawyers? Are the family members aware that they are here? Outside that, you check the record of arrest of the police officer, and you take a look at the place of detention. Does it, is it good for human being to be here? Have they stayed is more this happening than, already? Yes, it's already happening. Really? Have they stayed in such places more than the period required by law? So the committee monitoring that separately, but the uh, Honorable the Chief Judge of FCTI Court now put what you will call practice direction in place. I hope this is not happening only in the FCT. Well, it's supposed to be an act covering the entire federation, right? Yeah. Yes. Because from what you're saying, you're giving us instances of the FCT. And I said, is this happening already? And you said, yes. yes. So if I call up somebody, say, in Imo State, in Bono State, in Kano State, no, well, in Cross River State. We'll address well, that. Okay, I, may we'll not, I may not be able complete. to speak no, okay. for <laughs> those other states, okay. yes. but what I know is that this act, when it came into force, we began implementing it immediately in FCT. Yes, Lagos was the first state to adopt the law, but what we have achieved in FCT, Lagos have not achieved it. Okay. That is because of the pragmatic leadership of the Honorable the Chairman of Okay, committee. that leads me so. to the next question. I take that to Suleiman. Okay. Yes. Why I want to ask this is, how many Nigerians, because one, as novel as this document is, yeah. if a Nigerian, you guys said, ignorance of the law is no excuse. A Nigerian, an average Nigerian, how many of us, because it includes me, you, and every other person, is aware of this document? Yeah. Because if I'm aware, as of a right, I could approach you, I could approach him, because you are the, you create the last of the last of the common man, right? To say, this is what the law says. But most Nigerians are not aware of this, this act. So how will they know? Is it in the media space? Do people know about it? Yes, yeah, thank you. I, I think that's the, uh, the next issue that I wanted to address is, I haven't laid the background in terms of what happened. Then this law has come up with, I'm glad my chief magistrate has also- And I enjoyed it. Reiterated. No, that's just that, <laughs> just one little aspect of what, we are already implementing in relation to that, but which is very, very much uh, needed and uh, is making a huge impact. As far as the um, awareness and sensitization of this law, I, I think that is part of why we're here. Uh, it's always been happening with a lot of civil society intervention as well. Um, they, we have a lot of sort of this civil society organization as part of the committee, which is the uh, monitoring of the, and so, with the support of a lot of uh, development partners, MacArthur Foundation, uh, European Union, uh, they create a lot of platform. And the good thing that I've said is, um, which partly answering your question, uh, about how much it, at the subnational level, which is the state level. As of the, the beauty that I said, apart from, so we have crossed the line of this duplication of the law in terms of procedural law. We now have one uniformity, uniform law, okay. which is the best thing that's happened to us. And with that, you can almost, um, uh, you know what to expect in terms of the law provision across the country, not in more like segregating the north and the south. And so we have also had a step forward that the states are also adopting this, uh, this law. At the moment, we have about 27 of those so states that have adopted the SJ in terms of their, so they've gone away from. Um, in due course, I think we should have it all across the board. The rest of the states that have, haven't adopted, they are still going through the legislative process. At each state level, everyone is coming up with the different programs to sensitize, aware, make raise awareness. But I anticipate that there are, as to be expected that there are a bit of challenges in terms of being able to do that as much as possible. 
but um, but that is what it is in terms of awareness uh, but it has raised the bar in terms of criminal justice um, uh, management or system in mechanism in place uh, to the point of all those ills that have identified those gaps that have identified the law has actually put them in place oversight mechanism uh, a monitoring team which is what my day-to-day -day activity as a secretary um, that itself, I'll tell you briefly, comprises of people, the policymakers within the criminal justice system. It has members on the committee as the Inspector General of Police, uh, who could be represented by a Commissioner of Police. Usually, is represented by the Commissioner of Police legal, uh, that CP legal, uh, very active. Uh, we have the Attorney General himself as members of this committee, second, and sometimes could be represented by a director. The law says that it could be as anyone not below a director. We have the Legal Aid Council uh, represent, sometimes could be represented by a um, director, but usually in all cases it's always been represented by a director general in the past. Uh, but there's a new DG now who is also uh, similarly following that pattern. We have the National Human Rights Commission as a member and who could also be represented by a director. Uh, usually, director legal is always representing uh, at that uh, meeting. You have the representative of uh, MBA, local branch, and that is also happening in terms of the... the so we have this structure across all the states? No, the across the states is similar, yes. We, those that are... Some states do not have the monitoring committee. They have what they call the justice sector reform team. Which is similar to this. Which is similar, but it's all encompassing. Okay. What we're advising them is to say that you should segregate the criminal because the justice sector reform team uh, includes the civil and the family and the criminal. So okay. we're saying you must have a dedicated, Beautiful. just like we're doing in the FCT. Okay, let me come back uh, yes. to uh, uh, Chris. Lovely. And uh, this is what we're talking about. Now, we still have within the administration of criminal justice system I'm sure maybe your team, you're monitoring that. Uh, situations where innocent Nigerian, unsuspecting public, that includes even me seated here and a host of other Nigerians who do not know about this. And they have been exploited every other day at the point of arrest, at the point of detention, at the point of uh, prosecution. If they know their right regarding this document, they will have cause to raise questions, even if they are not going to be violent about it. Can you educate us? That's why you have this space. Well, as it is. Because we still have cases of people go to, are, are arrested and they pay uh, bail, they pay, they pay cash in bail. We start to be corrected. Even if the IG a few weeks ago had said people are not supposed to pay. Am, am, am I correct? So this is what I'm looking at. The, the stages begins with what the law is. What the law was, was what was in the large responsible for that. Because putting the law is one thing, enforcing it is another. And when nobody is monitoring enforcement, then it becomes as if there is no law. Now the law says when somebody is accused of a crime, if the offense is of this nature, that man doesn't even need to apply for bail. The court will grant him one. And the court will ask the prosecutor if he has reason why he should not be granted one. Now, all these are expected to be made known to people. But it's difficult for me to do that. It is expected of the local government, the media houses, the NGOs, to bring it to the public domain that this is what the law now is. But outside that, the, what the ACGMC is doing now is to take us out of our seat at least once every month to go out. And the best way is engage the media house, engage the like NGO, what now. like what we're doing now <laughs> is sensitizing the people that this is the new set of okay. law. I'm privileged African to be law. seated with you here now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many other Nigerians are not privileged to meet or know you. Mm. And I believe they'll, they'll be hearing for the first time that this kind of a privilege exists mm -hmm. in Nigeria. So in case people want to reach you, people want to raise issues, 
what role should the public play to aid your monitoring and make it even more proactive? You're very proactive. Mm. Yeah, I think there needs to be a lot more engagement with the, um, with the members of the public. Uh, and I think that dictates part of what we we also have a we actually have a a, a media subcommittee as well. Are uh, they available you, to the media? Uh, well, they they are doing their program. In they fact, they be, instigated they could, they could our the media subcommittee, but they are not available to the media. Yes, we know you know a lot goes with the media. The problem of in the public domain as well, logistics and the rest of it. So that is a little bit of a challenge which I can address at some point. But we are talking about the structure. We are talking about what we do it. I'm saying there yeah, need to be a lot more engagement, and we intend to do that in due course to set out a plan. But obviously, that needs to be backed up with a little bit of logistics issue to make sure that. It, so we want just this forum not just to be an interview. We, like I said, we want interaction with the members of the public. Okay. Perhaps if we because with more futures like weekly, monthly, they will they can phone in on their concern, and the more we do that, the more we think that. Uh, it will uh, enlarge the sort of uh, perception of the public. But that's going on across most of the states. Also, we are encouraging that. And uh, as you said, the monitoring committee of the FCT is meant to have uh, a nationalistic sort of uh, Absolutely. A, a approach and the uh, purview. Uh, and that's what we do. But we recognize that we can't be all every, embracing. So what we are also advising is to ensure that at the state's level that I've already adopted, they are also setting up their monitoring committee. And that way we can all converge. At some point, we can be liaising at that. So we are creating that sort of uh, uh, forum that we can meet at the monit monitoring committee level. We can advise them on our expertise. We can give them our expertise, our templates, whatever we have done, uh, and uh, to enhance their capacity, those that are coming up. Okay. And that's the only way we feel that we can have that larger sort of uh, uh, coverage of the whole uh, the country itself. Okay. So that's the program that we will thought will be handy for the uh, uh, in but, terms of uh, the awareness. Yes. In, in addition to that, the ACGMC as a secretariat hmm. with staff on the ground, uh, a national secretariat. Yes, okay. for the FCT, okay. and then you know the, the starting point is that this act applies to all federal courts. Where we don't have them is the laws pertaining to states. states. And those states who are adopting them are making it applicable to state laws. Okay, quickly. Yes. Does this mean because this thing has a visible uh, liberal uh, posture, it's a guarantee that I should go and commit crime? Just last word. No, not that. Okay. It's just that if the a word of punishment, in quote, is delayed. The confidence of the people begins to wane. Okay. So a man is accused of crime, five, six, ten years, nothing seems to have been done. He begins to lose interest. Okay. So is it that court or court last? Both, court or court last. Yes, <laughs> but to avoid that, the law says judgment and justice must be done speedily. Okay. So. You. Everything that is required is put in the law. And a step further, a committee is set up to monitor the, implication, uh, the implementation of that. That is where we Very are. last word. Well, I, I think the last word is no doubt the monitoring committee is best positioned to drive the implementation, no doubt, just as where the law says. Um, is also charged with the coordination of all the criminal justice stakeholders, ensuring that they also synergize and there is maximum cooperation amongst all of that. So no doubt the work and the mandate that has been given to the uh, committees itself, uh, and then it's a little bit of word in terms of it shouldn't have been committee really, it should have been much more larger than that so because the committee presupposes something ad hoc, you know, temporary, but this is meant to be long lasting. So perhaps that's also an area we're looking at. Uh, what I said that is also that this committee need to be uh, well positioned and uh, the capacity well developed in terms of capacity. Uh, so the, my last word, as you said, is for the government itself to make provisions to uh, strengthen the position of this, uh, is our institution for implementing the law of this criminal justice, and it's important that they, 
they are strengthened in all ramification. And that's the only way it could translate to have any useful or meaningful impact and in fact of the in terms of the implementation. So it's the same also with the respect of uh, uh, supporting the institutions within the criminal justice because there's one thing to put the law there and we have seen it indemonstrably that usually the, it's difficult for the compliance with most of these because the institutions are not strengthened. The police, the prison, the, you know, we have a huge challenges carried. around that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see, message is carried. Even Thank if you I'm not in a position to also drive the message. Thank you, yes, <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Chief Magistrate Christopher Oba, uh, Chairman, Speedy Trial Subcommittee of the Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee. So it was not having you on Thank insight. You. Thank you for having me. And also Suleiman Daudu, Secretary, Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee. Thank I'm you, happy sir. you've brought Nigerians up to speed. Thank you very and, much. But like we said, that is not a yardstick to break the law. No, no, no it's no. not. Up it's next not. on Inside is the media review segment. Stay with us. Thank you.